Hello, travellers. Welcome to the Battling Barrow and a unplanned video. Um, yeah, so I saw um, a few creators are doing a uh, sort of something called Kraken Week. Uh, I saw Mr. Welch do something, um, Blanco do something, and Bob the World Builder. And so looking over it, uh, I believe it's originated by someone called Genie D. Apologies, um, I don't know this creator. Um, apparently, really popular, but I just don't know. I haven't come across them really. Uh, it's their thing, so I thought, being that you know, my DD campaign is nautical based, uh, underwater a lot of time, I thought, let's do an impromptu video and just waffle because you know, that's what this channel's about me waffling about stuff on about underwater stuff. You can see here, I got like my underwater light that is going uh, when we're underwater. This is really cheap and easy. I did, I'm gonna do a whole video about lighting on Channel Sync, so if you want more detail about this. It's just a cheap projector, as you can see here, that just projects light on the screen. It's an infrared remote, but I don't use that. If you've seen my video on adding sound to uh, game rooms to have atmosphere, you know I use Touch Portal and so I can control it via that. So this has a, uh, an infrared has an internet device sitting in front of it so I can control it via that, via the internet. So look out for that in a video. But yeah, let's talk about nautical campaigns. What it's like to run a DD and d campaign that is entirely nautical. How did my campaign go nautical? Uh, it's an ongoing campaign. It's about three years so far. Technically a bit longer than that because it's still the same game world I was running back in the sort of late 80s, 90s, uh, early 90s. So, But anyway, so yeah, my character, my plan for this campaign was just a bog standard D and D campaign, medieval fun in castles and dungeons, slaying monsters. Uh, the goal of it was to play uh, classic modules uh, that I missed out on playing back in the day because I was homebrewing a lot back then. So I wanted to run all these Beck Me Mustara modules, and that was great. We're having great fun until we got to uh, War Rafts of Kron, and this one changed the campaign. This is the one where it happened. It started off where uh, it's. It's Mingrafad Guild's uh, Hyrendi princess has been kidnapped by something, all plots and that going on, and you're hired to investigate. Uh, the problem is, it's all underwater, so the first thing to do was to plan board the ship to get roughly to where they needed to go. And so this part of the adventure, we started doing sea shanties and going a bit nautical, and we really found we really enjoyed that. And that was a spark that started the fire for the rest of this nautical campaign. After that, the players uh, dig war rafts Kron, they managed to get an underwater boat from Coombs, now we've got this like almost submarine. Hence why I needed this to do underwater effects and do sounds of going underwater and submerging and what have you. Um, from there, uh, I they went, they ended up getting an island, going to Irendi and buying a ship. I had a load of gold because some DM had messed up in the amount of gold he was giving them for getting that in classic modules. Gold was equal to it for use for XP as well as buying stuff. He forgot that. Um, yeah, and then suddenly I've got a build a ship, a model ship. So there, there's a, there was a series of videos on the channel for doing that, and the mid mini uh, ships as well because um, big ships were like character play mini ships for like tactical stuff and for a while I used captains and cannons rules for nautical stuff and we quickly this year was when we went full on on the nautical campaign it's called Pirates of Mistara because our players are now pirates we're not the good guys as such we're not evil players but we're not the good guys uh, so yeah we're rolling with that the Pirates of Mistara and so we've got a ship and so what I've done is I've come up with an amalgamation of rules. There's lots of wicked pirate rules out there. Uh, Limrafell, I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm gonna probably put some text on here of how to, was the basis for this, but a bit something I didn't like. I did like the uh, rolling for the sea. It's a uh, hex based as well, which I wanted rather than grid based, because to me, ships are the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're going rather than doing wilderness grasslands, we're doing wilderness sea, so we're using ships that, so I wanted to go hex for that. So these rules took into account that, so I took that, and I took the action points, I like that, and expanded that out. Uh, the base saves of the ship to do various bits and pieces I took from uh, Ledger of Games, uh, Pirate's Compendium. Um, 
crew members having specific roles comes, I took that from captains and cannons, but just changed how what those roles were and how they work. Come up with some crew uh, members, and well, hey, these rules are really good. Um, so I put links into the others where I got got them from, and I'm going to put this just on for on Patreon or something like that, just on my Patreon account. Um, I may even make it free for all members. This this rule set because it's not technically mine; it's like an amalgamation kind of thing. Uh, so that's we're using that, and that is great fun. This allows for quick, fast tactical combat that feels nautical as well. Um, so many other rules can get a bit crunchy. So yeah, that's great. So yeah, we've got those down pat. Obviously, we're gonna have to talk miniatures. Uh, so when I first started this, I needed a load of fish sharks and stuff octopi and things like that so i got one of these tubes uh, i think i've had this for a while that i bought in portugal at a sea weldy type place and i bought that in the early 2000s uh, it's been at my desk at work for ages and then when i started working from home i bought it home with me and so i just used those and what i've done for the sharks is i drilled out a little hole and put a little sort of flying base that's used in wargaming tactical wargaming underneath for the sharks they look like they're swimming when we're underwater that is a real cheap way of getting some miniatures like some sea creature miniatures apart from that the rest of it's things like reaper bones do a great sea dragon i've done a video about painting that on the channel um and other things like that the crab man <laughs> thanks to the dungeon minister can't forget him he was a great uh great central piece loved him so much <laughs> He's been in two of our games now, maybe a third, who knows. Another thing I have done, and I'll again add to my Patreon for download, is I've collated all this sort of pirate and naval information from the Mystara Gazetteers and conformed into sort of one document for me to use to, so I can easily reference rather than get different books out, depending on where my players have sailed to. I've covered Irendi, uh, the Five Shires, Keramikos, Mingrifag guilds and a little bit of Fiatus. Um, I have done a uh, pretty much an extensive rewrite of IRND. It just what the actual gazetteer was never particularly happy with. So I'm going to be doing a video on this in more detail in the future. This is like a what's to come on my channel, being it's very nautical. This video is like a preview video. Um, also, if you're interested in terrain guides, if you want to get terrain guides, because I know a lot of people, if they use terrain in your games, be focused inland. So I've got, and then suddenly if your campaign goes to sea, what do you do? I've got loads of videos on the channel. In fact, there is a Pirates Terrain Projects playlist you can check out, which has all the nautical uh, bits and pieces in it. So okay now we've got what I've got in place to form this uh, nautical campaign. Uh, how do you actually do it? The best thing is to, as I sort of alluded to just now, treat the sea like the wilderness, like you would in a wilderness encounter. So you ro roll for random encounters as normal. I've got charts prepared that are already on my Patreon. This is not an advert for my Patreon. I'll keep saying this because I've been doing this for a couple of years. Everything I've been doing for my games, I've been putting on for my Patreons and downloads. All these random encounter tables are there already. And there's my cat who's probably going to jump up in a minute because he's telling me it's lunchtime <laughs> cat fed <laughs> so yeah use uh random encounters treat don't rush through the journey uh when you're at sea because that's what's going to give you that real nautical feel encounters don't always have to be sea creatures it can be inner conflicts on board your, from your crew as well i use the uh, crew quality rules from ghost of salt marsh and that has an effect that gets too low Mutiny, and there's your encounter for the sea getting to your destination. Islands, treat them as dungeons. I mean, an island itself can have a dungeon on it. Um, a ruined temple top that leads down to an underground passageways on what have you. No different to how you run a normal game for box standard stuff. I also have what I call the Pirate Adventure Generator. This is, you're not going to believe this, on Patreon. <laughs> It's not an aggro, honestly. But this is something where if I need to quickly have some sort of adventure and I haven't got anything planned and something unexpected happens, I can roll on this and generate an adventure. It has like a type of adventure, a location, uh, a faction who's either against you, working against you, or who you're working for, and sort of a, a conflict that need, something needs to be resolved and it just allows me to generate a pirate adventures really quick it's sort of inspired by uh professor dm's 
uh, urban adventure generator uh, that he used for when he ran the Veil Society and such for and so forth. Uh, yeah, that really helps to have that going. But another thing you want to do, you might get a bit bored of just travelling on a boat to an island to raid a dungeon. That's not really nautically. Think about it. Uh, think about maybe running an entire adventure underwater. Um, we start our hand. Uh, the creature, creature Crucibles, uh, I think it's PC3 was the Sea Peoples, uh, that's a great book, that's available on demand, uh, print on demand on uh, Drive for RPG, even if you're running 5e, take a look at that book, it'll give you ideas on how to run underground, uh, underground, <laughs> underwater adventures, it's great, all different races and can be really interesting. And of course, you add in the fact of how are the players going to breathe underwater if they're like land lovers, uh, you know, you know, land lovers. Why am I not wearing? Why am I not wearing the pirate icon for this video? God, let's get thumbnail. Yeah, so yeah, this is a bit waffly and what have you. This video because it is unplanned. I've just found about it. Found out about it on the Thursday, so I'm recording this now in my lunch break at work. Uh, I'm gonna have to end it soon to get back to work. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's loads of videos on my channel, and again, I'm trying not to self promote, but why Why should I feel embarrassed about being self promoted? There are lots of resources on this channel alone to uh, help you run uh, nautical campaigns because that is what I've been doing for about a few years now running a sea based campaign. Some of the adventures can just be normal land based adventures. You can land at a harbour, go into a harbour, explore the town like you would any other d uh, dungeon town, you know, Dungeon Dragons town. Uh, someone could come forth and say, no, these ruins are haunted up here, can you help us? My party would say no and just rob the town blind and then sail away, but your party is probably going to be better than mine. <laughs> yeah, there are lots of ideas uh, that you can run. Um, it, it, even looking at that, uh, all the other Crack and Wig uh, videos, Mr. Welch's has got a great section uh, uh, talking about encounters you can run. Uh, I popped the world builders done something similar. There's lots you can look at just alone this week, and I would recommend, highly recommend doing a nautical campaign. It's great fun. You can get your players doing sea shanties, which we do sometimes. Uh, you can, it's just uh, the dangers you can encounter, you know, totally can throw these really weird and wonderful creatures from the deep at your party that they won't know what's what. You can go to exotic places that you never wouldn't normally do, uh, you know, go to jungles rather than temperate forest. It's, it's, it's great fun, highly recommended. So sorry if this seemed a bit scatty, this video, it's because I hadn't had much time to plan it. I just only found out about it sort of yesterday, recording it today, editing and uploading it tomorrow. So on the day you're watching it. So yeah, if you're new to my channel, if you discovered this via cracking or you're new to it, poke around and have a look at the different sort of videos and playlists. There's actual, actual plays of our sessions here. Um, don't expect critical role stuff it's just a group of people having fun on a saturday or sunday afternoon uh, playing D, &D. uh we don't record it for the purposes of an audience we just i just put it on for because it is fun you can sort of see mainly because my channel is about terrain building effect stuff uh reviewing products and it's like a way to show all that how I utilize all that that I talk about on my channel. But that will be it. I'll stop waffling and get let you get on with something much better with your day. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Until if you do stick around, take care. Until the next one. Bye bye.